close are you to feeling like you'll be ready to play? I really don't have an answer for this. Physically, I'm fine. Now it's just a matter of, uh, like, when I feel like Zion. Stop right there. That man said, I feel fine physically. Now it's just a matter of when I feel like Zion. You can't make a statement like, oh, when I feel like Zion. He's got to find a way to get back on the court. Period. Don't like him. I mean, it sucks. I don't know how else to say it. It's starting to look very bad, and it's raising suspicions everywhere. He doesn't want to be there. It's just a matter of, like, you know, when I feel like myself. Your teammates are going out there and doing the best they can, and you are still waiting to be right? Unacceptable. That's not how this works. Physically, I'm fine. Now it's just a matter of when I feel like Zion. That is the answer Zion Williamson gave us when asked if he was healthy for this year's playoffs, which incited Stephen A. Smith to respond with, he's gotta find a way to get back on the court, period, because it's starting to look very bad and it's raising suspicions everywhere. Huh? From a player who was labeled the future of the NBA and a generational prospect, perhaps the biggest prospect since LeBron James, a period of 16 years, to the NBA's biggest question mark, at what point are we allowed to ask what is fully happening with Zion Williamson? We have had reports that Zion was rooting for the New York Knicks to win the NBA draft lottery, quickly left the draft room after the Pelicans got the pick, and now he has barely played for the Pelicans as this year without a doubt. If Zion Williamson was on the roster and healthy, the New Orleans Pelicans could have made a large playoff. And the only reason we have to why Zion did not play is that he didn't feel like Zion. Add this to the fact that Stephen A says this entire thing is suspicious in a way that infers that there is a lot more going on behind the scenes here. That's something like an intentional move to a big market like New York or Los Angeles is still in the works. He played in 24 games his rookie season. He's played in 29 games the last two years. I want to root for Zion. Zion Williamson. But unfortunately, nothing with Zion is an isolated incident anymore. We are building a long history. What's up, Mike here, and today we are talking about Zion Williamson. We are talking about the fact that Zion and Luca have been spotted in France. And of course, that has made waves because both Zion and Luca are not only eliminated from the playoffs, they are on teams that you would consider kind of in nuclear meltdown situations. Would any of us bet our lives that Zion and or Luca is going to be on their team next season? I don't think so. Before we continue, I am very, very, very excited to say that Coors Light is back with a new daily approach. Guys, we are in a grind to 1 million subscribers on Coors Light. I'm putting it out there. Here is the beginning of the new Coors Light. I lose it. Ah. We got to figure this out <laughs> very, very quickly. For my team to get this dub, it's huge. Please go subscribe and turn on post notifications and watch that new Coors Light video. For now, let's get back to this video. We've seen Zion show up to training camp over 300 pounds. That is just not acceptable as a professional athlete. He missed the entire season last season. And during the season, for whatever reason, no one was able to contact him in Oregon. And when CJ McCollum was traded to the Pelicans, he said he could not get into contact with Zion. And then again, in his own words this season, he was held healthy, but mentally he has decided he is not ready to play. So if physical health is not the issue, that means that there is no end in plain or clear sight. And it's also very clear that Zion is still affected by his weight incident as Zion has said what people don't understand is, imagine if somebody talked about their child, how they spoke about me, critiquing my body, critiquing how I look. Every time they talked about me, it was about weight, how bad I looked. I don't even think they realized what kind of impact that can have on you, which continues to make things strange because most people are not paying their children a contract of five years, $193 million. And so at a certain point, I think we can all agree that a professional athlete making that amount of money should show up in a reasonable form of health. And we've also seen with a player like Ben Simmons that if a team like the Brooklyn Nets makes the wrong decision and bets it all on the wrong player like that, it could potentially ruin a franchise and ruin 
that teams fans experience for a very long time. We have no idea where the Brooklyn Nets will go from here as Ben Simmons takes up $37.9 million of their cap space next season. I think we can also agree that we want the game's brightest young stars on the game's biggest stage, the NBA playoffs. And so we can also agree that having Zion and Luka hang out in Paris rather than battling for the Western Conference Finals is interesting, but also ultimately disappointing and I will say dangerous at least for Zion's career. Let's immediately jump into this tweet from Skip Bayless that provides us with some insight because after Skip said players were not happy with Zion, Zion's teammate Larry Nance Jr. did defend him saying, no one in our locker room is looking at Z any type of way. We're with him every step of his rehab and support his process physically and mentally. Don't listen to people saying things just to get views. That is not why we are here. We want the truth. And so it is important to note that Zion's teammates have his back here. It's also important to note that on the fan side, they are incredibly frustrated. There is no denying that at all. It appears that there is some kind of mental block going on with Zion. This is a new type of situation in basketball. Again, not any of us are sure really what to do here. Zion himself, after saying he was healthy, also said, this shit sucks. I don't know how else to say it. It sucks. I love this game. For those people who think I just want to sit on the sidelines just to sit over there, I don't know why people think that. Nah, it sucks. I just want to be playing basketball. Fans though responded to this by saying, prove it. Do literally anything to prove it. He wants to play, but he just doesn't want to do everything that's required to play. There's a distinction between wanting to play and doing everything it takes in terms of taking care of your body that enables you to play professional basketball. I love Zion to death, but his words and his actions don't line up. Okay, so right there, that final statement hits. I mean, end of the day, we all know that words can be cheap. It is a person's actions that define him and show us who he truly is. So let's take a realistic look at Zion's actions from both angles. From the negative angle, the story is a clear and bad one. In high school and a Duke, Zion was nothing short of a tank that could fly, as he not only averaged 22 and a half points per game and nine rebounds a game as the National Player of the Year as a freshman, but also he shot 68% in the most electrifying way possible. Watching Duke highlights of Zion, we are seeing the next coming of true greatness. This was not a Ben Simmons scenario where Ben mailed in going to college at LSU and has openly talked sense about how much he did not like it at all. Zion was the best player on the number one team in America. And yes, they were upset in the Elite Eight, but let's take a look at the second round here. Because against Taco Fall and UCF, with three and a half minutes left, Zion takes it to the rim with no fear at all and just glides the ball in. And then... Wasted a lot of time. End up sending. Williamson driving in on Taco. Oh, and that's going to be Taco Fall as the basket goes. And one. And then he breaks the free throw, but Duke wins. The point being, who had the confidence to take the shot with the season on the line? Zion. And when he's been on the court in the NBA, he has been nothing short of amazing. In the last 14 games, Zion has played healthy this season. He averaged 29.8 points per game, 7.6 rebounds, and 5.2 assists. He also shot over 63% from the field. Those are numbers that if he was playing for the number one team in the Western Conference, which the Pelicans were, were in December, well, those numbers would have Zion probably in the MVP race, but then came more injuries, then came more talk of this mental block, and also came Stephen A shouting to the world, hey, look, everybody, this is suspicious. Keep in mind, last year, I dove into Zion and Stephen A's connection as they were both repped by Creative Artists Agency, aka CAA, aka the same place where Nick's president of basketball operations, Leon Rose, was once a super agent at. It is hard hard not to look past the fact that other CAA clients do include Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. Is that what Stephen A means is suspicious here? Because I really don't see Stephen A coming at a man's mental health at this point. I could be wrong, but the word suspicious, knowing that all of these guys are essentially low key wrapped by CAA because nobody talks about that openly and nobody talks about how mutually beneficial it is for everyone in an agency to boost each other. Like if Zion is by CAA, and so is Stephen A. And Stephen A 
talks about Zion on his show, well, that is Zion, a CAA client, receiving free press. And now add in Zion's father's comments about wanting to go to the Knicks, about Zion's father being the biggest Knicks fan growing up. It's not like this has not recently happened. Kawhi Leonard's uncle was a major factor in him leaving the San Antonio Spurs and ultimately ending up on the Los Angeles Clippers. The reason being that his uncle wanted Kawhi in a bigger market. At the end of the day, that could be happening here. What also could be happening is that Zion is really struggling mentally and that he's going to turn the corner and really figure this out. I think the biggest thing here is that with mental health, we are still adjusting to this all. This is all still a new conversation in terms of players sitting out especially. But at the end of the day, while this is happening, the fans are being affected. Again, the money cannot just be discounted here. Players are sitting out while still getting paid, while fans are spending their time, money, and energy and are often finding themselves disappointed. Imagine you are a New Orleans Pelicans fan. Imagine you're rocking a Zion jersey you paid for, walking to the stadium on your night off with tickets you paid for, and then, and then your favorite and star player is announced out yet again as your team takes a big loss as you have gone from the number one seed in the West to a team that doesn't even make the playoffs. I really hope that we do see Zion healthy and on the court next season. Personally, I'm afraid. Zion has only played in 114 games in his NBA career so far, and now he is stepping into a max contract he is financially set for life. That motivation to become an NBA legend has to come from within. You need a work ethic that is going to outwork everyone around you. Does Zion have that work ethic? We are definitely soon going to find out. And thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. What do you think about Zion? Do you think he is gone? Do you think the Pelicans should trade him and bet on Brandon Ingram and the team that they have in front of them? Again, I am going to continue to say bet on Zion's return. We saw Michael Porter Jr. return. I don't think that's exactly the same scenario, especially with this whole New York Knicks rumors going on. But end of the day, I think you at least let Zion show out. I think Zion is going to come back and play at that mega superstar level again. Will he do it for a continued amount of time in New Orleans? We will see. I want to know what you think down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You are awesome. We all know it, and as always, have an awesome day. And cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think, and again, have an awesome day.